The very first year's race was called the There and Back. It was, a, it was a challenge to ride a bike to Fink and return. Our biggest off-road event. We've come here ten times and never ever finished. So this time we're going to finish it. The Red Centre, a harsh location, remote, arid, dry, and dusty. And it's here that a race takes place that is physically demanding and mentally draining, absolutely unforgiving. The Fink is a legend. With over 40 years of history, teams have come racing out in the Aussie outback in conditions that are unbelievably tough on both equipment and the drivers and the riders too. It's based in Alice Springs, a town of 28,000 people, and it swells this weekend with 12,000 campers who line the racetrack to watch 140 entries, take on an extra 600 motorcycle races as well. At dawn, teams get ready to start this amazing race. Australia's toughest desert battle has come a long way. First run as a motorcycle race in 1976, the event was called the There and Back Enduro and ran alongside the old GAN railway line. The inevitable introduction of cars and buggies came in 1988 and attracted some big names. Well, it wasn't even halfway and it broke, broke the left hand set of shocks off the, the chassis. For 11 years, bike riders were crowned king of the desert. Until Mark Burrows claimed the first four-wheel win in 1999. In 2005, separate races for bikes and cars were held for the first time. Both worth 10 grand to win. Since then, modern day legends have been born through dust and grit. The Fink has earned its brutal reputation. This road has seen four decades of history, pain and triumph. It still runs alongside the old railway line and it still requires the same mix of determination, bravery and luck. We, we tried to work hard to be back here on the two wheels, but um, it didn't quite happen. Had you know issues, broken axles, broken input shafts, broken clutches, all that kind of stuff. Been in the lead three or four times at least. Um, been on the podium four or five times. You know, it's just never we just never managed to string it all together. That's a tough race, and yeah, every year gets bigger and bigger. More competitors, track gets a bit seems to get a bit tougher every year. You need a reliable car that you can push. Um, it's become a sprint race now. You, you are pushing hard all the way down because if you don't get down there. Um, without a problem, you're going to be left behind if you don't push all the way. Preparation leading up to the race is probably one of the biggest things. Make sure you get the car right, get yourself right, get your mind right. Like this desert can bite you really quick. One mistake and you know that you could be out in seconds. Last few years I've maybe gone a little bit too too easy just trying to win it. The years before that I was going way too fast. You know, it's, it's trying to find that happy medium to actually be able to get down there. I think it's the atmosphere and just that red dirt. Being here in the middle of Australia, where else would you want to be? It's just, uh, everyone here is here for the same reason. It's to enjoy motorsport racing and um, there's no race anywhere in the world that 
um, matches the high speeds that we get here at Fink. I think when we started, we probably went, okay, we'll get a truck and we'll try and beat the trucks. And I think year one, we were sort of like, well, we're here to, we're obviously here to win outright. And, and before she rode, he sort of put me in my place the very first year, you know, Trav obviously always, always puts me in my place. Um, you know, Wrenchy's obviously a, for, a force to be reckoned with all the time. Um, you know, he, he's been a bit hit and miss the last few few years, I guess. Um, but like, he's probably the, you know, I guess the best sports ever seen, really. It's great to see you know, everyone's out there having a ball, and yeah, when the helmets go on, we all change our attitudes a bit. But at the end of the day, we all can sit back and um, have a beer and a good time. The first test for these amazing machines has big ramifications. Prologue acts as a qualifying session and sets the starting order for day one of the thing. A fast time will put you at the front of the queue. A slow time will drop you back into the blinding, choking dust. The circuit stretches 8.3 kilometres and features fast bank corners with plenty of bumps and whoops. The big story this year is Toby Price competing solely in the trophy truck and not on a motorcycle. Runner-up in the cars last year, he's aiming to be the first competitor to win the Fink on both two and four wheels. Price is armed with a brand new Geyser Brothers truck from the USA. The truck arrived just before the event, limiting testing. Despite clipping a tree, he had the seventh quickest time. There was plenty of attitude from Andrew Moles. The Alice Springs local set the best time in the Prolight class. It was evident how important a fast time in the prologue was. South Aussie Greg Gartner wild on his way to fifth overall. For over 25 years, the Robinson family have chased glory at the Fink. Still, they wait for their first win. In 2017, they have two chances in the field, brothers Travis and Bo. Bo has a new navigator this year. He and Shane Hutt were fourth quickest in the prologue. Reigning national champion Jack Rhodes has a brand new Jimco buggy. The new combo worked nicely, third quickest. The second quickest time put Shannon Wrench in a good position for the race. The BF Goodrich Pro Buggy Driver is hunting a fifth King of the Desert crown. A convincing win at the previous event in St George, Queensland was the perfect think preparation for Travis Robinson. He kept that good form going, setting the quickest time in the prologue. One hundred and twenty five drivers completed the eight point three kilometre circuit, and this is the order they'll start the journey to think. West Aussie Travis Robinson, quickest by just over three seconds. This earns him the right to be the first on the road in clean air with the best visibility. We've got all the, all the stuff here in, in Australia that you can go and see and do and it's uh, it's a great place to explore and, and Northern Territory is one of those one of those states that, that, that brings a lot to, to the table. Heaps to see, especially around Alice Springs, you know, for a little town it's got a lot going for it, you know, so you always find something to do, so uh, it's really friendly people, so it's a great place. It's like home, you know, you're walking through the shops, people are stopping talking to you, the whole town gets behind the event which is um, really special, you know. As soon as you roll into town up here, everyone knows about the race and they're all excited about it. And anywhere you go around town, people are willing to help you out. So it does make a big difference. It's um, yeah, it's great to see so many people interested in it and having fun. We've used 
this is our holiday for the last 20 years now, so we save it up, have two or three weeks off, make a big trip out of it. Yeah, it's just great fun. We're talking about a town that essentially measures our year, years by finks, and you know we're talking about a whole town. It's not footy, it's not soccer, it's not you know V8 supercars, whatever. It's it's off-road racing. Cars are attractive. Going fast is attractive to a young veteran. Okay, so I'm a 33-year veteran uh, of, of multiple conflicts and um, all the people in the team are from recent conflicts. So they are all uh, bearing the scars of combat over the recent years, over the past 10 to 15 years. So um, they're all here as a common goal and a common interest, which is the team, uh, which is racing because that's attractive to the younger veteran. And it's from that platform that then we can then uh, work on their issues and help them support their wellness through their own life and they can rebuild their life. So PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder and one of the foundation um, issues with post-traumatic stress disorder is anxiety. So we invoke an anxiety in our members. So when they hop in the car, we'll then make them feel anxious but get them to use their coping mechanisms that their psychologist has used and all their other others to calm down and then we'll keep going faster and faster. So it's teamwork just like the army. So with the basis is teamwork, invoking some level of stress and getting that confidence in the post-traumatic stress disorder issue. That way when they leave and go and do, just go and get bread and milk and they're feeling anxious, we go, really? You've just beaten 30 cars through the desert at Fink. I don't think you have that much problem. And it's a confidence thing, it rebuilds the soul. Jason is uh, over from the UK, Race to Recovery. He's gonna lead us out and he's gonna navigate me all the way up to Fink. Uh, for me personally, I've been in the wheelchair 20 years after a rock climbing accident. Uh, I was with the Royal Engineers in Gibraltar and fell off the rock. Um, broke my back, spinal cord injury, and now I can't use my legs. We've concentrated more on the physical injuries. So for spinal injuries, for amputees and things along those lines. So this is a quite a big achievement for, um, for us to be in this race and to show what we can still do. Cars are attractive. Going fast is attractive to a young veteran. Doing it in something as ludicrous as this at Fink is attractive to a soldier who is known to risk things. He loves risk, he's a soldier. That's why motor racing works for young veterans. Race day. 129 cars are waiting on the start line in Alice Springs, ready for the epic journey to Fink. The track stretches 226 kilometres south on dirt roads. There are four checkpoints along the way used as timing splits. The drive in a road car can take well over four hours, but today the teams expect to arrive in under two. The first 10 cars will leave at one minute intervals. After that, the gap closes to just 30 seconds. Given how dry the track is this year, dust is expected to be a major issue. Travis Robinson was quickest in the prologue, earning him clean air. The current BF Goodrich Cam's Australian off-road championship leader 
has been waiting for this moment for 12 months. A minute later, the decorated son and father combo of Shannon and Ian Wrench. South Aussies Jack Rhodes and David Polino were next. First of the high-flying trucks, Bo Robinson. Extensive pre-event testing and reconnaissance for this team, will it pay off? Toby Price, ready to start his first desert race since breaking his leg in a motorcycle crash at the Dakar. He's sticking to four wheels this weekend. Travis Robinson was making the most of the good visibility. Behind him, the dust was almost impossible to see through. On the left, we have Travis Robinson out front. On the right, his brother just three cars back. Believe it or not, that's the same stretch of road. Bo simply couldn't attack with the same confidence and ultimately lost time. Adding to the international scope of the Fink, a couple of American off-road racers. President of Jimco Racing, Matt Loitis, is driving for the Jaws Racing Team. And two-time Baja 500 winner, Harley Lettner, has taken the wheel of Luke Ayres' pro buggy. Drama for Mark Burrows before the first checkpoint. A rare crash for the five-time Fink champ. His 2017 campaign was over. Second in points, Bryce Chapman applied plenty of pressure to Talbot Cox in a dusty battle of the buggies. Shortly after, a pressure gauge on the torque converter failed and Bryce Chapman's goal of finishing the Fink for the first time was dashed. checkpoint and the first split times. Travis Robinson opened up a sizeable lead, the gap to Shannon Wrench over three minutes. And behind them, a tight battle for third. Bo Robinson was reeling in Jack Rhodes. I'm Steve, I'm from Catherine, and um, we're just standing here to watch the race, have a good time. I've come from Catherine, Rod's from Catherine, and um, Bully's from Edamuka in South Australia. Uh, I love the bush anyway, and I love fast cars. I'm a nutter with fast cars, V8's lovely. This is great, yeah. We're in a good corner here, nice location. Can have campfire, a few beers, no, no officials, it's great. How laid back can you get? Yeah, the Fink, um, it's just a great race, you know. You can sit out in the bush and camp and have good fun with your mates and watch fast cars. Minimal planning, just bought out some firewood uh, last weekend and we came out yesterday, we'll be here till tomorrow. Uh, we've been here for two years. Uh, we used to camp at 40K and probably next year we might even find another spot, just a different track. It's good to see. Long weekend and get on the piss with some mates or watch the buggies and the bikes. Some because you're local, you usually know a few that go past, so it's good to cheer them on. Back on track, race leader Travis Robinson lost time due to an unusual problem. That was a GoPro flying into the car. The camera got tangled with Robinson's throttle pedal. This caused the championship leader to have a few wild moments.
past halfway to Fink, this is how the virtual race order looked. Travis Robinson bounced back from the GoPro issue and arrived at the Bunduma checkpoint over four minutes clear of Shannon Wrench. Bo Robinson was first of the extreme two-wheel drives and ahead of Jack Rhodes. The big battle was the three-truck fight for fifth. Toby Price was just one second ahead of Brad Gallard and was closing in on Greg Gartner. In total, 23 out of the 129 starters failed to make it to the Bunduma checkpoint. With 34 entries, Super Light B is the most populated class in the 2017 Tats Fink Desert Race. It's the battle of the utility terrain vehicles, Can Am versus Polaris. A fantastic entry level into off road racing. New machines only require a few added safety features and cost less than 50 grand. The extreme four wheel drive class is, well, exactly as it sounds. They are highly modified 4x4s. This class has great variety, and out of the eight entries, there are six different manufacturers. The battle for victory across the 11 different classes, always intense. Out front, Travis Robinson at full noise, extending the lead. Ahead of the reigning national champ on the timesheets, but not on the road, Bo Robinson continued to close in on Jack Rhodes' buggy. But any chance of an overtake was impossible due to the dust. Robinson's Geyser Brothers trophy truck also developed a diff issue. It was leaking oil. Further back in the pack, visibility was even worse. West Aussies Shane and Kurt Elphinstone displaying great bravery as they tackled the endless, nauseating bumps. Everyone in the pro buggy class was pushing the limits. A close call for Paul White who would have rolled if that tree wasn't there. Trouble for last year's winner, Glenn Owen didn't arrive at the Mount Squires checkpoint. He stopped on course with mechanical dramas. Third in the BF Goodrich Cam's Australian Off-Road Championship, Tate Svensson showed great perseverance driving to Fink while physically ill. At the second last checkpoint, Shannon Wrench gained time on Travis Robinson. The race leader developed a gearbox issue and lost fourth and fifth gear. Big surprise was Toby Price, who was now the fastest on track. Price made the most of some clean air and was feeling more confident in the new truck. One of the most popular spectator points is the big Fink Jump. Located inside the last kilometre of the track, fans and locals from the Apertula community line the road. First at the jump was the race leader, Travis Robinson. Stuck in third gear but still flying, he stopped the clock at one hour, 48 minutes and 44 seconds. A steady opening day for Shannon Wrench. Over three minutes back, but within striking distance. The crowd were eagerly awaiting the first of the trophy trucks. Bo Robinson didn't disappoint. Toby Price showed why he's a fan favourite. Spectacular on his way to fifth. Brad Gallard had a consistent day. The 2012 winner was sixth quickest to think. Trouble free run for Chris Coulthard. Quickest pro light buggy to think was Andrew Moles. Michael Marson arrived inside the top 10. And so too did two time winner 
Hayden Bentley. Um, look, the car handled perfectly. Um, boys done an awesome job, was fast, trend did an awesome job, but um, we had a drama with a um, GoPro camera from one of the local um, TV news or whatever thing, put it on the car and it jammed under the throttle. You know, we, we recovered, but the times that we wanted to make the big time and maybe relax a little bit, we couldn't do that because we lost all pretty much half through deep well to Rodinga. I've just um, been, I've just, you know, not been able to go hard, so what can I say? Oh, we had a pretty clean run down. Track's really rough, probably the, the roughest I've ever seen it. Um, yeah, just really tough conditions, but you yeah, had a bit of dust probably at the start and throughout the throughout the trip down. But yeah, overall, that was a clean run and the, the car looks in pretty good shape. So yeah, we'll get it prepped up and ready for tomorrow. Just um, just dusty as it gets, so we're just a bit of a procession by the looks of it. Everyone sort of looks like they're coming in pretty much in the order. And, yeah, we're just stuck in dust all the time, you know, so there's not much we can do. It was a bit, it was a bit better in the real rough stuff because the heavy sand, but it was so dusty, I couldn't do anything. All up, 96 out of the 129 starters arrived at Fink. Travis Robinson the quickest, over three minutes ahead of Shannon Wrench. They'll leave Fink in this order and at these intervals in the morning. The class leaderboard. A good day for the Robinson family, but it's the run home that matters. Andrew Moles, 17 minutes clear of Matt Martin in pro light. The experienced Jeff Pickering, a whopping 27 minutes clear in the production for all drive class. Thousands of team members arrive in Fink to work overnight. Travis Robinson's pro buggy will require a gearbox change. His brother's truck needs some attention for the leaky diff. The 2017 marks 30 years of cars racing at the Fink. In those three decades, off-road tyres have evolved to be purpose-built for racing. Modern tyres need to provide grip on changeable terrain, supply stability at crazy speeds, and help soften the ride while taking serious punishment. Ranging in diameter from 30 inches up to a huge 39 inches, they cost between $300 and $600. Trophy trucks can burn through a set in 300 Ks. As a lifespan, that's 200 times shorter than a road tyre. But its toughness is unparalleled. Rubber and steel belts with a nylon layer add strength. The aggressive tread patterns can be altered by teams to achieve the right feel. All three compounds are quite soft. Most teams at Fink will stick to the standard or medium compound. BF Goodrich tyres are made in America for tough machines and they roll at the world's best desert races from Baja to Dakar and right here at Fink. someone that's looking that little bit extra in front of where the driver's seeing. I'm the navigator in 121, uh, alongside my father. We're at the Tatsmink Desert Race, around two of the Australian Off-Road Racing Championship. There's someone that's looking a little bit extra 
in front of where the driver's seen, looking out for the dangers, um, you know, where you're going really, especially in dust. So I try and use hand signals as much as I can. Um, sometimes you can't really see them depending on where we are. You know, over the whoops you can't, your hands bouncing around. Um, so I just try and be as clear as I can and talk to him, you know, it's hard left, it's an easy right, just guide him through so he knows how to power through the corners or has to back off. It is hard, um, especially at a track like Fink. There's, it's not a circuit, you can't really pace note it. It changes, you know, you come down to Fink and then on the way back it's completely different. Um, so really it's just your rights and your lefts pointing out dangers that we can see. Um, well, I'm just the second pair of eyes, really. I try and guide Stephen as much as I can. He most of the time can see the, the track, but I'm just sort of that reassurance of what corners are coming up or, you know, where we sort of are on the track. Well, I'm talking to a brick wall with him, so I yell at him and he forgets what I've said. So um, it's, I think I'm able to be a bit more stern and be like, right, do what I tell you to do. It's pretty beneficial with Stephen, like he's my partner, so I can kind of get up him a little bit more. It's a bit, comes a bit more naturally. Um, I don't know, we're just as good as the men, I reckon, so why not? Sunrise at Fink. The teams have woken from their campsites in conditions below zero degrees. 98 cars will attempt the return journey to Alice Springs. First on the road, the overnight leader, Travis Robinson. Two hundred and twenty-six unforgiving kilometres stand in the way of his first Fink victory. One man who knows how to play the final day, four-time winner, Shannon Wrench. Robinson was third away. He had five minutes to make up on his brother. There were still plenty of drivers in podium contention. There was trouble for a couple of former winners. The trophy trucks of Brad Gallard and Hayden Bentley both failed to arrive at Redinga. Shannon Wrench was flying. Quickest through the opening two checkpoints, he was taking huge chunks out of Travis Robinson's lead. Quickest between Bunduma and Rodinga was Bo Robinson. The fight between the top three was on. Toby Price's great run came to a halt soon after. Last year's runner-up 
had to change a tyre. The crew were clearly in a rush to get back on track. That BF Goodrich tyre, now a souvenir for a lucky camper. Well, we started off tenting and then we had the camper over there and now we've got the caravan. It's fantastic, everybody just comes out and has a good time and it's great. Cheers. Thank you. This is our spot that we come to every year and we've been very lucky that we manage to get it every year. As you get older, you've got to upgrade. <laughs> I'm Simone Mueller, I'm from Narracourt in South Australia and I used to be an ex-territorian teacher up here and my godson is in the Fink and he's Damon Stokey number four. He's been in the Fink several times and we've never been here to see him and um, he's just won Baja and Santa Felipe in Mexico and we think he could have a good chance so we've driven all the way this week to see him. Family, friends, grandparents, kids and uh, yeah we've been here since Friday leading up to the event and um, yeah we're pretty excited. After an eventful run to Rodinga, the race was incredibly close. Travis Robinson's overnight lead had been slashed to just 35 seconds. Shannon Wrench could smell blood in the water. Bo Robinson was still in the hunt. At this point, he was nearly four minutes clear of Jack Rhodes. Remarkably, despite changing a tyre, Toby Price was still in the top five. Anticipation and excitement building as the cars race back to Alice Springs. Outside the top five, there were some big achievements. Greg Gartner drove his way up from 32nd to 13th and was clearly on the limit. Queenslander Talbot Cox drove from 18th up inside the top 10. Two drivers improved an incredible 68 positions from where they started. One of them was Simon Dean, who drove his Can-Am from 116th all the way up to 48. Approaching the final checkpoint, Toby Price had another issue. He and his navigator, Luke Hendry, worked quickly to diagnose the problem. A broken bolt on the harmonic balancer disrupted the engine timing. They were out. Final checkpoint on the run back to Alice Springs. And the first car to arrive was Shannon Wrench. The race leader, Travis Robinson, was missing. In a cruel late twist, Robinson suffered power steering failure. Bo Robinson passed by, saw his brother stopped on the side of the road out of the race. Wrench inherited the lead and a comfy buffer back to Bo Robinson. This also promoted Jack Rhodes up onto the podium, although he was battling a broken exhaust. Robinson and Price both out, local driver Steve Sanderson now had a place in the top five. And Michael Marson's smooth driving was rewarded. He was fourth. Mm -hmm. 
After 450 kilometres and nearly four hours of driving, Shannon Wrench arrived in Alice Springs. A fantastic performance for his fifth Tats Fink Desert Race win. Shannon, congratulations. Can you talk us through the run home? Yeah, we just uh, pretty much just pushed as hard as we could through the whoops and we could see it was really dusty. I think we must have caught up to Trav a fair bit and then we sent him uh, pulled up on the side of the road. So, yeah, just now just really happy. Just a lot of work to make this happen. A really hard race to win and just yeah, unbelievable. What went through your mind when you saw Travis pulled over? Well, yeah, I thought Trav had it actually. You know, he, had, he was running a brilliant race. He, you know, he, leading from start to finish and I just thought we just push as hard as we could when we can see we'll, I just thought we'll either try and catch travel break the car one or the other to see what happens so no it just um all the, all, all the work paid off is the goal now to become the most successful at this race is that a thing that you can achieve oh it'd be nice too but yeah we'll just keep being competitive while we can and um no just um wrapped <laughs> second place Bo Robinson a sweet result that came at his brother's expense. Hey Bo, your family has tried over and over and over to win this race, maybe not this year, but second's a great effort. Congratulations on another big result. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. You see, what's the emotion like when you get back to see the family? Is it pretty oh, big? Yeah, it's good. It's just no good seeing travel on the side track. I had enough of that. What went through your head when you saw him there? I just hope he held Wrenchy up enough. I thought I was going to go and get him. <laughs> no, I don't know. Just, yeah, it's just a shame, isn't it, you know? Boys spent a lot of time last night putting your gearbox in and they went through everything. So, obviously that was pump or whatever. Just, you know, brand new last night. So, what do you do? What are you going to say to Travis when you see him? <laughs> I don't know. I think he'll be speechless for a little while. Jack Rhodes brought his new Jimco buggy back to Alice in third. Well, Jack, that's a very tough end for uh, another Fink campaign. You've brought them home on the podium, but not without a few issues. Yeah, definitely. It was probably the toughest weekend we've had in the car. Um, we can't we can't be too upset with it. It's a, like car landed three weeks ago, so it's been a massive effort by the team to just even get to this race. We've faced pretty well every obstacle to actually get the car running. So um, I'd just like to say a big thank you to them and everyone behind me because it, you know it, it wasn't even looking like we we're getting here alone to come in where we did. Some late race drama. Steve Sanderson and Talia Ocas just made it back for fifth. And Andrew Moles spun within sight of the finish line. got back on track before Harley Lettner arrived. Talia, congratulations. Clearly a dramatic run home. What happened? Um, I'm pretty sure we hit a tree just before the 20k mark. It was everywhere, all in the cab. I had to try and get it out and we, Stephen thought we lost the back wheel but it was actually the front after all the dust was spraying everywhere. So. Yeah, and then coming to the shoot covered in mud, so. What were you saying to one another in the car? Um, just try and get it home. We couldn't really see much, couldn't see which tire was blown, so we just coasted home. Shannon Wrench equals Mark Burrows five Fink victories, one win away from David Fellow's record. There was plenty of movement on the leaderboard during the final day. Great work Peter Costello and Chris Browning sneaking into the top 10. 82 out of the 98 starters made it back to Alice Springs. 
The class winners, Nathan Shivers, drove brilliantly in Super Light V. The little Can-Am finished 20th outright. The closest margin of victory was in Super Light A, where the result was decided by just over a minute. The largest margin was Super 1650. Michael Phillips finished nearly an hour clear of second. Championship picture, Travis Robinson still leads. He banked some good points despite not returning to Alice Springs. Matthew Martin moves to second and is close enough to worry the leader. Chris Browning jumps up six positions to third. Congratulations to Shannon and Ian Wrench, another chapter in an incredible career. Bo Robinson stands on the Fink podium for a fifth time without a win. Jack Rhodes and David Polino, that's their third time on the podium together. The final round of the BF Goodrich Cams Australian Off-Road Championship is up next. The location, Rainbow in Northwest Victoria. The very best in off-road racing, have some work to do after two gruelling days out the desert. For some, the preparation for next year's Fink has already begun.